Okay, hello everybody, we're back. So today we got a couple of different programs here. Today we're going to be learning TCP. Uh, last time we learned UDP. So, if personally, I would recommend that you use TCP uh, over UDP because it is it has error correction. So it's more robust. And personally, to me, the lower latency of UDP doesn't really, for me, it's not that much of a important feature. For me, reliability matters more. So we import socket. Now, on the left-hand side, on this side, this is the receive. So essentially, this is going to be the same program as we did before, but now you're going to see how things are going to be different. First thing that's different is when we create a socket here, the address family is again internet, but this time, instead of using SOC DGRAM, we're using SOC stream. That means this is TCP. Okay, so we've made a TCP socket. Transmission control protocol. Now, this line 8, that's an interesting line. And this line 8 is completely optional. We don't need it. So why have I put it there? Well, it turns out that I'd like to be able to run this program again and again. And if I don't have line 8, now, if I don't, then I'm going to have to wait until that socket becomes, av becomes available to use. And the operating system is simply going to tell me, if I try to run the program back to back, like twice or more times, it's going to say, you know, well, you can't use that socket because it's already in use. Even though I've actually turned, I've already finished running the program previously, it's the pr operating system is still going to say that socket's in use. So in order to get around that problem, uh, what I've said here is I've set the socket option, set socket opt to re to reuse a, to. I know it's, I don't exactly know how to describe this. It's socket dot so underscore reuse address to true to one, which essentially means I can use that uh, socket again and again. I don't have to wait for it to become available un until the operating system says it's available. Okay? Um, and there, by the way, the reason kind of for that also is that um, let's say, for example, you're trying to use a uh, a socket that's being used already by some other service. Well, then your program's going to say, "Well, you can't do that because it's being used by somebody else." Okay. Again, I'm going to uh, run this program on the same computer, so the host is going to be localhost, and the port I'm just picking some random port uh, above 1024. Now, just like before, I'm going to bind to that. Um, socket, okay, because we're receiving. Remember, only the receiving side needs to bind. And then uh, I, I actually have this extra added um, line, line needed in TCP, which is called listen. And the one here is the no, a number of allowed pending connections, okay? So you can have more than one uh, connection connecting to this TCP socket. Now, uh, but I'll, we'll show how to do that in a future lesson, not today. So the next thing I do is, so though this is, this is now different from before. Now I have s.accept, okay? And in this case, I'm not getting data here. Okay, I'm actually trying to establish a connection. So, s dot accept is blocking. Now, that is going to unblock. So maybe we'll leave this program and go to the right hand side program. Let's take a look at the client. Client does the same thing. It also line six creates a TCP socket, and it sets the host and the port that we're going to connect to. And now, notice we connect. Notice we don't bind, we don't listen, 
we simply connect to that host and port. This line 9 now unblocks line 16. So s.accept, this, this line 9 unblocks that. Okay. Then the next thing we do here is we ask the user to type in some information. This is keyboard blocking. So this is going to wait until you actually type something. So let's go back on this side now. And now it says print after accept. And now let's take a look at the connection and the address. And we'll say this data variable, we'll set it equal to 1. And while 1, which is true, and now we'll say data equals con.receive. This is actually the line, line 23, that actually does the receiving of the information that we send. Okay? Line 11 doesn't send the information, it just gets the information from the user's keyboard. Then line 13 actually sends the line. So now listen, line 23 again is blocking. In, in other words, program execution stops on line 23 until it receives data from that connection. And where, where is that connection? It's here. It's, it's associated with socket S. Now, line 13 will send the encoded data, which unblocks line 23, con.receive. OK? Oh, yeah, this is something really cool. In TCP, packets don't have to arrive in order. So if we sent like a lot of information, it, it might get there in a, in, the, in, in a jumbled up order, but TCP will um, rearrange it to be the correct order that it was transmitted in. Okay? And, but here's the interesting thing, is that because we're just doing send, we're not going to get... Um, it may not, like, this might not return or finish receiving until we close on this side. And that'll guarantee that everything has been sent. Okay? So, once again, simply doing send doesn't ensure that all the information is sent unless you actually use send all. Okay? You could use send all, and I think that would do it too. So let's try running it, and let's see what it looks like. OK, so let's try it. So we'll go uh, Python 3, which just I can just type in p. And now we'll go uh, TCP receive 1. Let's go local. Oh, actually, I don't have to type in localhost. Because in this case, I've hard coded localhost and the port. So I can simply just type in enter. And now we're at before accept. We're at line 15. On this side, I've also hard-coded host and port, so they're not command line arguments. So I'll just go p, and we'll go tcp send 1, and enter. Now as soon as I hit enter here, the connect ran, which unblocks uh, the line 16 accept. Once that unblocks, it prints out after, and it also prints out the connection, it says connection equals to socket.socket, .socket, file descriptor 4, and address family internet, uh, sock stream, which is TCP, and also it tells me what the local address that this socket is connected to, which is, that's remember, is an, is an alias for localhost, and then that's my local port and then this is the remote port or remote address so there's the IP and there's the remote ethereal uh, sorry ephemeral port 46584 which is always going to be a high port and so that's it okay uh, also notice that address by the way is a tuple so notice I went print the address, ADDR, notice that address is a tuple. OK? Now, now what's blocking on the server side? Line 23, con.receive. 
And notice I can only receive four bits of data. Okay? So um, let's try it. Let's send something. Let's send in uh, hello, Bob, enter. Take a look. Look what happened. It said hell, O Bo B. Hello, Bob turned into hello, Bo B. Why? Because look what's happening here. I'm, I'm, remember what print does here. Print actually puts a new line character at the end of it, right? Now I can get rid of that in Python by going end um, equals quote quote, but I didn't. And also look at how many bytes of data I'm receiving every time this loop goes through. How many times did this loop go through? Guess what? One, two, three times. Okay. The first time we got the word H-E-L-L. -L. The next time, the second time through the while loop, we got O space B-O. And then the last time we just got B. And then um, this thing ended, it sent close, and so this thing gets everything now. Okay. Now we don't have to make this four. We could make it bigger, in which case we get everything in one shot. All right. So that's how the TCP works. I mean, we could try it one more time. Um, remember, I have to run the server first, okay? And now I have to run the client. And um, I could send more information. So, you know, how? And I can, I can. Well, it's too late now. How was the trip? There it is. Notice, this is kind of interesting because how actually has a space after it, because that's four. Was space, the space, and trip is four. OK? OK, so one last thing that I'd like to go over is when does the receiving side, the server side, when does it stop? So before we go into the loop, data is one. And as long as there is data to receive, then, um, you know, by the way, we can change this from four. Usually, probably, maybe good to set it at uh, 1024. But essentially, um, when does it stop? Like, what is data? So I've actually, t uh, I'm printing data, and I'm not decoding it here. And I am uh, typing out the type of the data, or, or not typing out, printing out the type of the data. So if I, if I run the server side again, here, here we go, and then I s send something, oops, if I send something like, uh, you know, hi, now, notice it gets a binary st uh, string you know, with the B in front that says hi. And then the second time through, so it goes through, prints the, prints the highs, prints the data type, class byte, right? That's bytes. And then it goes back up. And this time, it gets empty string. And it prints out empty string. and it says that the class is byte again. But why does the while statement stop? So let's take a look at that. Let's go into the interpreter. And if I actually check uh, empty byte string, and, and is that equal to false? And so, uh, oops, uh, I think, sorry, I didn't do that right. I have to go like this. There. And it is. So uh, an empty binary string, a byte of an empty string, is in fact false. And that's why data stops. Or sorry, that's why the while loop stops. 
Okay? So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this lesson, and we'll see you next time.